recording. At least, yes. Yes, yeah, now yes, thank oh, you. you this, this, <laughs> this is becoming, I never noticed that. Okay, good point. Yes, the signal is very small, so sometimes it's not visible. Yeah, yeah, so especially if you didn't start it because you forgot. Okay, okay. so anything else? Now you might be hearing some rock music here because my neighborhood likes like me likes metal. So when he comes back from work, it's you know this extremely high volume. In case I will put the earphones. I will do it now. Professor, we can hear you. What about now? Now, yes. Uh, the earphones have a separate amplifier. And uh, well, the guy was listening to Megadeth, which is was very interesting. But unfortunately, we have to speak to about that. Um, so again, Questions? General questions, whatever I mean. Okay. Yes, Professor. I just wanted to ask if it was possible to, uh, if you provide us uh, some measures that we can practice for the exam. Uh, well, let's do. Uh, well, you know, just uh, redoing everything we did is not bad at all, you know. Just get the names of it and redo them without reading the code and try to do them in multiple ways. Now that you know, not only calculate, but also some X, not only some X and so forth, but also calculate measure. Uh, try to ignore one filter or another. Try to do red and yellow sales. Try to do red only this and that. You can also, I mean, OK, we do the budget thing, then we think about it, but it's just that uh, if you just go through, yeah, I understand anyway, you want to try something different. Uh, okay, we'll do something before the end of the lecture, we'll invent something, I will say. Uh, remind, me that, uh, remind me that later, some ideas might come while we do the thing. Anything else? Okay, so uh, the, I think we should do the budgeting thing. So. Um, which is a very important pattern. I would call it a pattern because you know it happens all the time that I go in a corporation, there's always this budgeting. And it has a typical granularity problem. Therefore, the, what we're gonna discuss this time is not only multiple tables, but it's just the fact that we have a granularity issue in the sense that the budget is not provided in a daily or let's say in a transaction fashion. So each row in a budget table typically is not a transaction. And therefore, it might be an issue to connect typically to the calendar. That's typically, that's typically the problem. Now, uh, I would do the following if you agree, but let me know if you agree. You know, it's off the record. This is an unplugged video. So just we're thinking about what to do and how to, to do something interesting for you while I was coming down here. So instead of doing replicating what I did in the crash course, which is adding to the current month. Let me open and share my screen first. Now, uh, the last one is March 26. This is now the encore, just like the rock bands. The first.
I wanted to do something a little different to show you something different than what I show at the crash course. Now, some of you didn't join the crash course. The recordings are available somewhere. Uh, I think. I think. And uh, and there, what I did was to complicate a little bit this model more, adding a budget table. Now, honestly, I also add that I remember a product subcategory and category, something like this. But there was nothing particularly special. Just a couple of more. This is called Snowflake. This data model is called Snowflake. Um, that was not particular, but I added another fact table. But the point is that this fact table was easily connectable, I think, to customer. Don't remember now, we will check that. Um, to sales territory. No, 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 no customer. No, customer was not for sure. It was sales territory, I think. So I could connect this. I couldn't connect product, so I have to connect something like this. And then I had an issue in connecting calendar. The issue is that in the budget table, we don't have a prime, uh, we don't have a date because we don't have transactions in dates. We have like totals for month. So we have entire month in a single row. So that created a problem because the month is not a primary key in the calendar and is not a primary key also neither in sales and so forth. So this made this model very complex to use because you couldn't use any more this table if you wanted to do budget this budget. If you wanted to do budget versus sales, you couldn't use this table because that wouldn't filter budget. It's not connected. Um, this connection here, this one is for info service. So don't get fooled by that. And yes, you could use calendar. You couldn't use customer because that was again only uh, filtering sales. You could use sales territory and you couldn't use geography because you couldn't use customers. So of course you couldn't use geography um, in this particular case. In this case, on the contrary, so what were the OK tables? This was OK. This was OK. This was OK because it was connected directly to uh, budget. Uh, but I had also to leave it because it was making it possible for product to connect still to sales with this connection. So I have to leave product. I can't use it, but I have to leave it there. And of course, this is OK. So that would force me to kill a lot of, ta of tables. Like, for example, we had no practically no purpose anymore in using the info service table. Oh, yeah, we could just see that by calendar. But, you know, this was becoming difficult. And it's a pity to kill all these tables because they can be useful when you uh, you know go through sales and stuff like this so sometimes well you know you might anyway generate just one data set and then um, and then high tables and so forth but what i want to show you is another approach i want to generate another file another power bi desktop just with the budget without sales and then we shall merge these two models in a composite model. So we shall, let's say, live connecting in data query, but data query on a Power BI data set, not Power Query on the data source in the service of the corporation. We, have, we are already on the cloud approach. And then we shall basically end up in this situation. We shall have a first data model, which is the one you were looking at before. And then we shall have another data model which is the budget one. This, this is going to be budget one PBIX file. And this is going to be whatever we call it, sales and info service. That's another PBIX file. Now, what we shall do is we will publish both of them to the service. You can do that, but you will see me doing that. 
we will do this together, the budget model, we shall do it together and solve the problem of the model. I will then publish to powerbi.com both, so I can share both, but I can also create a third PBIX after I publish, because then I have one, let's say, no, not here. I said that this data set one, and this is data set two. Then I have data set one and data set two, which are here. Yes, I need to connect if these are connected to a certain data source. So this is connected here, and this is maybe connected to the same source, maybe to another one. OK, I need to connect this to the gateway for the refresh. We shall do that. So these data set now are fine. There will also be a report, but we shall kill the report because we don't need a report for that, at least not now. And then with this new PBIX, we shall merge the two models. We shall create a composite model that is directly being fed by D1 and D2. And of course, then we shall publish this with a report. We shall generate a report. So here we shall have the two models in one single Power BI file. The two models are the ones that are on the cloud. So I'm live connected. I'm directly connected via internet to those data sets. I don't have anything in my Power BI desktop. I have the stuff in this Power BI desktop and in this, I've imported the tables. Here, I don't import anything. Here, I just connect to two data sets and I can connect them. That's the important part. So I can generate a new data model, which is just taking two existing data models. And then, of course, I will generate my report here, budget versus sales, and then I will publish it so that I have a report. We call this report. And I can share also this report. So that the advantage is that I can share sales. I can share budget individually. Now, you know, sharing budget individually makes not so much sense. But suppose that it's sales and purchases instead of budget. I don't have a purchases data set here, so we cannot do that. Uh, and so I can leave this fully rich. And then I can just generate this one in which I can hide some of the other data set tables, the one and the two, and generate a data set clean just for the budget. A report, not, not the data set. I will not publish a data set when I publish this, when I publish this one, because I already am using data sets. Why should I publish them again? The data sets are just being reused, which is the important part. So my DAX written here will be on D1 and then it will automatically be available here because I'm live connected. So you will see that when I generate a measure here in my first Power BI desktop, if I refresh the other, I will suddenly see the measure. And then I will publish this. And the point is now, should I connect anything to any, let's say gateway? No, because I'm not publishing anything. In reality, in reality, I'm publishing something. Because in order to connect two models, one of the two models becomes local. One of these two models here needs to become local. It's a technical thing I don't want to dig too much. Uh, it will mean that I will formally publish one of the two models again, the one that becomes local. But in reality, you will see that when I try to see if I need to refresh, there will be a warning that says you don't need to refresh this because this is just a live connected model that we need to make local somehow, just like I have imported something. That's the idea. Uh, just because the system works like this, more or less. Now, we don't have to worry about that, but you will see that when I publish this, I will, in fact, publish one of the two data sets again. 
But again, that, that will not be really considered a data set, or at least you will not have to refresh it because it will automatically refresh from itself because it's just a copy of one of the two just for technical reason in order to make this amazing thing possible. The fact that I con can connect to two existing models on the cloud and connect them, slice them with new tables, with existing tables, you can take one table for one model and connect it to a table to another one and then do a visual that does this job. So this allows for a huge reusability of models. Now, did I stone you with this? Are we okay? Can we start? Give me a feedback, please. Yes, I think we can start. Okay, so we shall now create only the budget model. I never did that, so this is some kind of an unplugged thing. Surely something will be, there will be some issue. So we shall just leave this as it is, but we shall use it. We shall use this file, which I renamed with the date of today, which is the last file. Uh, I need to do uh, to apply some changes here because I need the product subcategory thing because I need it for the budget, I remember. So, uh, oh, no, 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 then we can just do that on the budget. Okay, I'm just thinking in the other, in the other term. So I think we can close this. So this is just the last one, just rename 31. Now we generate a new Power BI desktop. Now we could connect to another source. In reality, we shall connect to the same source, just our data set. But in principle, you could have data in another location for the budget. Okay, so we're just using, uh, again, Excel. We have maybe a recent sources, but I don't think so. No, too far away, so just uh, let me copy this. Now, this time we want to build a budget. Now, it, make, it might make sense to build a budget model by itself because in, I'm thinking about it, you can just reuse it. It should contain the several budgets like sales budget, purchases budget, logistic budget, stuff like that. So you can just then reuse it at hand and not duplicate it. So in reality, it can make sense to generate just a model just for the budget. So we want to do budget, calendar. Uh, we don't need customer because if you check the budget, there is no customer, so why should we import the customer where we don't have it? So we don't want the customer. Geography, I don't remember sales territory region. It should be sales territory, reading the name, in case we shall kill the table later. We don't need sales, we already have in another model. Uh, we need product category and subcategory. We only need subcategory because it's in budget, subcategory. So. And then I will take the category because it's just on top, so I can use it to slice with you know shorter things, just like the category and not the subcategory, so number less, so more shorter number of value. Uh, product we have it already in the other model, so we don't need it. And geography relates to customer, which we don't need it. So these are the tables we can play with. So we can load them. There has been a, a recent change. Uh, I, wanna, I was asking you, have you been hearing it? But of course, I don't think you already stay tuned to what happened on the Power BI thing. Oh, and I have an update available. Incredible. I updated 10 days ago. Anyway, uh, now you can use filter and calculate with uh, columns, with different columns. They need, just need to belong to the same table and you can use the sugar syntax. So now you can write something like calculate sales field and you, you can write calculate sales and then product color equals red and product location, product country equals whatever. You don't need to write the explicit filter. That's a good thing, but the columns need to belong to the same table. So that will make everything easier. And the equivalent of course is just an, uh, a filter on the all on both columns and then the filter is applied. If I did, if you didn't understand anything of what I said, just uh, explicit that and we will speak about that. So now we have the tables, we can take a look at the 
data, data model. Okay, so we have budget, which is our you know core table here. You see, it's pretty small. We just have. Uh, let's take a look at the table. I'm an Excel guy at the end. You want to look at the table. That's the good thing of importing. When you import, you can see tables. So we have the year, the month number. You see, we don't have a day. So a single line represents the sales budgeted for an entire subcategory, an entire region, and an entire month. So this is the granularity we have in calendar in terms of data which means that we're going to have an issue with the calendar. Now, we can try connect product subcategory. Of course, I don't like seeing the name. I would prefer seeing the subcategory ID, but you know, sales guys do this. So they are usually not skilled in data. So, and I understand that they need to read the names. I understand that. It would be nice to have a column with the subcategory key. We don't have it. We have unique names, fortunately, so we can just, uh, uh, well, we're assuming we have, <laughs> Uh, not duplicate names, so we can just live with that. Of course, that's something that I would immediately point out. Uh, that's not exactly the best way to work, but if that it is, that's okay. And then you have the sales. So let's try to connect this table to the rest of the model. Now there is already a connection. So the region has been connected. Now I wanna try to see if it works because you never know what is the content of the two columns. It's easy to see if it works. You just go here, Power BI is fantastic for this. You can just generate quickly a measure which is budget. Something like this, and we want to try to see immediately if it's correctly sliced by anything in the sales territory table. Seems to work. So, of course, it's invisible, but it works. So, filtering is working. So, I don't see any blank value or weird value. So, the connection is good. And that's fine. So, one thing has been already solved by the guy here. Now, we cannot connect product category and product subcategory. We just imported that because we, I oh know, right, we have the subcategory thing to do. Um, we have the name, so the problem is that we need to go to subcategory. Remember, it's the name because if you connect it to the key because you didn't inspect the column, you can say surely they generated a key because they are good guys. Now you get the problem here, which is cardinality many to many. OK, so the trick didn't work. I hope that it would just create that and you wouldn't be able to slice, but let's go to product subcategory name. English product subcategory name. English product subcategory name. Let's see if it works. And then it's already connected to the product category key. I want to check if we can slice by product. So keep away that country. Let's go by subcategory first. Just the English category name. Yes, it works. And of course, now you can slice by category. It's just on top of that. So, you know, category is always working. So that's what you get. Everything okay? Yes. OK, so now we have the problem of the calendar. We just didn't connect the calendar yet, so we, we might think, OK, fine, we shall. That's OK, but in reality, that's going to be a little challenging. Now, somebody didn't join the crash course, right? Otherwise, I'm going to go fast because you have already seen this. Is there anybody that is the first time that does this? <clears throat> I'm asking because I didn't remember which of you was attending the crash course. I think I, I, I was the only one uh, in the crash course. Okay. okay, but I need just one, you know, I don't need many. Just one, it's enough. Okay, so I will do it then slowly as I should. 
and for those that were already there, it's uh, just a refresh or you can try, you know, isolate, do the solution yourself and then start listening again. Just, uh, just suggest if you want to challenge yourself. OK, so the point is that we have now the connection of the calendar. OK, fine. So we can we say here we have year and month, month number of years. So of course we can't connect either of these columns because there is not a primary key on either side. In reality, we can, but we don't know how to handle that, so we don't do that. Uh, but of course, what, what we need first to do is generate a single column with year and month. Now, this is just because this is Power BI, uh, or let's say analysis services, tabular, that's what the name of the model is, but anyway, it's not like uh, Access or SQL, SQL, which is a relational database. Uh, that reads row by row. In that case, you can connect multiple columns. Uh, and so just to generate a primary key, in this case, I would connect. Uh, it's not a primary key anyway, but suppose that it is like the uh, product and, and, and plan thing in the cost table. Uh, uh, you should have seen that, or maybe you have never seen that. No, we did that. We used that data set. So in that case, we solved the problem generating the column. Now, in Access, you could just connect product with product and plant with plant, and you wouldn't be needed to generate the column. In this case, even if we generate the column, because we need to do that anyway, uh, we don't solve the problem because we still have multiple values in both tables. So we shall see how to, let's say, to fix that, to manage that, not fix that. We have to manage that. Uh, so we shall generate then a many-to-many -many connection, many-to-many -many cardinality connection. So let's, but let's just first understand what we want to do. So first of all, we notice, okay, we need the column. So we generate the column. We go to calendar here, uh, budget here. We generate a new column. And we call it budget here month. It's good to give it the name of the budget. So we know that that's it. We can do year budget calendar year. Where the hell? And we can format the month and I'm doing that so I will copy the same code in the calendar. And I will generate a new column also here. Your month, and that's calendar, calendar year, and calendar month number of year. Is this correct? Seems so. But that's not working. Calendar month number of year is not working. I need to do this. So it didn't work also in the other table. And I didn't notice that. Exactly. Now, this is just to format the month in such a way that it gives you two digits. The point is that otherwise the sort order looks ugly. Let me show you if I just do this, because in this case, the command is just wrong, so it doesn't work. It's just just like if I connect the concatenated just the two, and you see that now it looks really ugly. The sort order is crazy. OK, so just want to. This way, it's understanding it needs to treat it as a text, basically. Because it is a text. This is, this is indeed the text. OK, so now we have the columns. The point is that, yes, now we can connect them, but still we have a problem because if we do connect them year month with budget year month, we still have the issue that now the software is telling us the relationship has cardinality many to many. This should only be used if it is expected that neither column contains unique values and that the significantly different behavior of many, many relationships 
many, many cardinality relationships should have said is understood. Now, many, many cardinality is different from many to many. Many to many is another point, is the point of houses and owners or you know, bank accounts and owners of those bank accounts. There is not a unique correspondence in either direction. It's always many to many, right? Each person can have multiple houses and each house can have multiple owners. And each person can have multiple bank accounts and each bank account can have different owners. So that is something that I will speak about shor shortly later. This is not what's happening here. What's happening here is that we have data organized in such a way that neither columns is primary in both sides. But it's not that there is a logical thing, just like the houses and, and, the, and, the, and the bank accounts. So here the problem can be solved. We could accept this, even though we shall check the both thing and make it single. And I need to make you understand why I want you to do this. And in order to do this, furthermore, I need to show you what's happening, even though it's not exactly what's happening, something that is similar to what's happening if we say to Power BI, okay, go ahead, connect. Connect a many-to-many -many cardinality column. Again, it's different than many-to-many -many connections, which is another point. Many-to-many -many models, uh, relationships, which is another, another point. So a single connection cannot be something like many-to-many. -many. A single connection is a many-to-many -many cardinality. A many-to-many -many thing is just something wider that we have in the model. Just you didn't notice that, but we already have it. We, I will put it in evidence later. So we don't want to do that because we don't know what that is doing. So we want to stop this and we want to think. Now, there is no way to solve the, the issues, let's say, or the particularities or of the many-to-many -many models, the many-to-many -many relationships in the sense that many-to-many -many, yeah, models. Uh, because there is, there is nothing you can do. It's like this. Each person can have multiple houses and so forth. So you need a table inside the model that help and therefore it needs to be from the data source that helps you understand which house is owned by which person and which person owns which house those tables are called bridge tables now in the case of a many-to-many -many rela uh, relationship like uh, bank accounts and how and, and owners or houses and owners and so forth uh, this table needs to come from the data source. So if you don't have it, there is nothing you can do. It's a table that lets you understand how things are. Now, in this case, we don't need such a table. I mean, we need such a table, but we can build it ourselves. Because this is a many-to-many -many cardinality problem. It's not that there is a logic of many, of not being a one-to-many. It's just that we have data aggregated in a way that doesn't work for our calendar. Our calendar has a granularity of single dates. The budget works at single month. Still everything OK? Yes, I think. OK, I understand that the many to many thing is a bit subtle to, 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 to grasp. Let's forget that for a moment. We want to focus on the fact that this bloody connection doesn't work. And we don't know what this many to many cardinality is, so we want to try a solution that we can understand. And then we shall do, let the software do the thing for us. So we will go back and say, OK, go. Now we understand. So. Is there a way that I can solve the problem here? Think about it. Yes, the year month is not unique in calendar. Of course, we have you know many times the same year month, 30, 30 times, 28 times, 29, uh, 29 times in leap years, 30 times. And here we don't have a primary key either because for each month we have a different sales territory region and subcategory. So the same month is there multiple times. But do we need an association between the budget year month and the year month in calendar? 
I mean, something that comes from the data source. I don't think so. It's easy to understand when an year month corresponds to another year month. The point is that making a direct connection seems to be challenging, but maybe we can invent something clever to do the connection maybe differently, not between these two tables. What if we could create another table? Something that we can do in Power BI. We cannot do that in Power Pivot, but we can. There are other, let's say, uh, wrap up solutions, uh, workarounds, let's say, but they're not fully automatic, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure I should check it, but anyway, surely more verbose and complex. Here we can just generate a new table if we want. Now, what if I tell you that I can generate any table you can imagine? Can you suggest me a new table? this bridge table, but we can build it ourselves. We don't need to connect again to the data source. What if I can create a table here? And then I can do a one to many connection. And another one to many connection. Now, if I could do this, and if I didn't, for example, filter calendar, I could hide calendar and apply filters here. Would that work? Yes, why not? Now, <clears throat> I create uh, the table with the um, the one dimension I need, and with this dimension I filter the the first table at the higher uh, side at the uh, at left, and then I use it to filter uh, uh, the the under table, so the fact table. Okay. Now the point is anyway that since we have a single model, somebody might ask me, "Why are you doing this?" Why are you thinking about connecting this table to the calendar when the calendar is not connected to budget? The point is then I'm already thinking that we shall need to create a composite model. So if I'm thinking that I have sales here, then I need calendar and calendar is connected to sales. So it is an advantage to create also this connection so that when I filter here, I can filter calendar that just for the purpose of filtering sales. And I can directly filter budget. That's the idea. OK. So the reason why I'm doing this connection, but we could also say that we haven't thought about it. We shall think about it later. So let's imagine how it is, as it is that we forget about this detail. So now we generate just a, a table. Uh, sorry, I forgot. What should this table be made of in order to do this connection? One to many. I want to apply a filter here, of course, a, a time filter related to calendar somehow. And so what if I can create a table? I can do that. Just tell me what this table should be, how many columns and what column should I have here and which value should I see? It could be a column table with only your month. OK. But the because point is, is then this table needs to have a characteristic. What about year month? Should there be any repetition here? So each month should be listed how many times? 
the answer for is each a, one uh, for each one budget year month so that needs to be a primary key okay but otherwise we cannot generate a one to many connection we know this connection so we want to generate this now again somebody might tell me at this point why don't you simply use the budget year month column that you have in the budget table why are you creating this new table and then you just have the values okay you have the distinct values but at the end you can just apply the filter directly to the budget what is the answer to this the answer is that i'm thinking that i will need to integrate what should i do with the budget itself the budget is used to come to compare with the actual so i'm already thinking that i need to connect to another table so i want to generate a dimension like this like product that is there in the under model and like calendar but i cannot use calendar so i'm generating the time dimension here so creating this connection will let me filter a single month here and see the budget in a single month now we can think about then connecting this again to calendar but maybe we shall do that later because that will make it useful then because calendar will be connected to the sales when we generate the full model and therefore a filter applied here will filter both sales in this way and budget in this direct way and we can do sales versus budget okay you have any questions can we proceed generating the table Now let me go straight on this many to many thing while you elaborate if you have any questions. I want to show you the many to many. It was in front of your eyes up to now, but I just didn't say anything. Now look at this model. You know it very well. Now if I ask you for each customer, how many product do I have? What is the answer? I'm waiting. At least one. Well, at least one is not what I want. One or more than one. In the product table, you said? Yes, for each customer in the customer table, how many products do I have in the product table? Uh, many. Many. And what if I ask you how many products I have in the product table for every customer in the customer table? So one. No. For each product in the product table, you have many customers. Each product can be bought by many customers, and each customer can be bought by many product, uh, can buy many product. So the many to many thing is there in front of your eyes if you reason in terms of dimensions. In fact, we do have a bridge table here. What is the bridge table? What is the table that is telling us which customer bought which product? This table here. And in fact, this comes from the data source. So many to many is just the normal point. We just try to avoid filtering here 
and pretending to and trying to apply filters here. We always try to apply filters towards the bottom to go here. But sometimes it can happen that you want to do these things, like in the case of houses and owners. In this case, we have a table here that is telling you which house is owned by which owner. OK. So no more on that on the many to many. So the many to many is something that is normal. Just to try to avoid it as much as you can, because it's a bit complex to have filters go from this table to this table. You need to involve either bidirectional filters or calculate with cross filter things. So everything becomes a little complex, so we try to avoid that. That's it. But it's basically always there. Now I forgot an important detail. So I'm opening that again. Look at the connection. In the case of a real many to many, what you have is one many one. In our case, we're considering these tables. You have a one that goes, of course, I picked the wrong one. You have a one that goes to a many, and then you have a many that goes to a one. This is the many to many, the classic many to many problem in business intelligence. So this is a bridge table, but from Sorry. the bridge table, yes. But it, uh, the second one is uh, to one to many. The arrow is uh, uh, is uh, the, the direction of the arrow is left from product to sales. So one yes. to many, and you yes. said many to one. Yes, but the filter, the fact that the filter is go propagating in a way, has no importance because I can make it propagate in this way. I'm just speaking logically. Ah, uh, sorry. Sorry. OK, so no, I understand what you say. Yeah, the point is that here you said you're speaking in the same direction. Here not. OK, but suppose I have the problem of knowing. How many different colors. Uh, of products have been bought by each customer. Now, if I need to do this, I need to take for each customer the products bought and for each of them, I need to go and get them from the product table. So that's going to be a problem. I could take the color and bring it down here, but that's a bad idea. Generating a column, you know, I might not have the chance to do it because of memory reasons, problems. So sometimes you need to do this kind of calculation and then you enable this bidirectional filter. So don't worry about the filter direction. Consider just the logic. So we have a one many, many one. So the bridge table has stars on its side. The bridge table that we are doing is different. Our bridge table has one and one here. Let me prove that. Go to your model. No, I don't see the body cursor anymore. Look here. What we want to do is generating a table that we don't need to get from the data source because this is one and one to many and many. So this is again a bridge table, but we can do it ourselves. And the important point is that that's the kind of bridge table we are generating. Now we can generate a new table. Modeling new table. We can call it year month. This is just an all, I would say, all no blank row. Uh, I will explain what that is of calendar. No, it's year month. Now I would take the calendar ones.
working. Just a second. Now this command is generating a table. It should already be there, I hope. It's right here. And that's our table. Now, I don't like it very much because it starts from July and ends in June. So I have a dumb, a stupid calendar table. OK, usually calendar table should be complete, but I, I, I happen to have here a dummy calendar table. OK, we generated this column. So now we have this table. And now we can connect this to budget year month. It didn't work. That's a one too many. And now we think about it and we say, OK, it's good. We can connect also year month to year month here. And so we prepare the conditions for connecting this table, this one you have in front of you, to the sales table in the other model. That's what I'm going to do later. OK, so I created the condition so that I can now connect. Consider this as a black box, you know, it's a, just a box. Well, we can have a wire here, just like a plug, USB plug that is internally connected to the date. In this table. And just connect this to any fact table, which has a date column. That's going to be a one to many. And so a filter will propagate. The important thing is that the filter propagates also to another model, and that's what we shall see later. Well, later, now, let's say. OK, we want to try that it works. So we want to filter now this year month thing. Put it here in the graph, kill the rest. And it's working. This is by year month. Now it's showing things not very nicely because it's sorting by some stupid thing. Sort by year month. <coughs> <coughs> and it's going in the wrong direction. <coughs> okay, so now the model is working. Any questions? OK, so this looks like now a nice potential data set. It's ready to be plugged. It can be plugged to a table that has a sales territory region column that has a date of any kind because, because we can use, you know, this is an internal interface. We can connect this to another table. And we have this also, which also is ready to connect in this case to a table that has a, the product subcategory uh, as a many size. So we shall connect this to the product table in the other model. Okay, now what we're going to do is reason in terms of usability. So of course, we need to use the budget and compare that with the sales. But now we have two different Power BI files because we did that on purpose. So I will now open the other one. It's not already open. No. So one is called, OK, I will call it data set sales. Yes, they also have a couple of graphs in it, but I will call them data sets and I will publish them to the workshop workspace data set on the cloud, a tiny, tidy workspace where I publish only the data set. Now, I don't have it. I don't want to create it. Well, we can create that. Um, Maybe we can we need to go to the Power BI service first. This should be the service and I'm logging in with the user of a corporation that I'm working for. As a consultant or as an employee, so I need to have an address, uh, a user at the domain of the corporation. 
So the corporation will provide it to me or they will do it because I cannot log in into their domain if they don't allow me to do that. And we want to publish, of course, in their Power, uh, Power BI uh, cloud, not on mine. Now I'm publishing on mine because that's between us. But now what I'm doing here, I'm just oh, I'm just asking questions. I'm just creating a new workspace so that I can publish there directly. Now this is confusing workspaces, create a new workspace, name this data set. So I have it, I never created that, save. So now I have a data set, a workspace, just a place where I can publish. So just let's leave it open. Now we I want to publish both this and I could then share and I could then use them either to create a sales report connecting only to sales with its full potential or a budget report only a bit weird, but maybe only budget. OK, another and maybe different reports that show sales in different ways with different graphs, everything. But I want to do something more. I want to then I want to then create a model that takes both inside Power BI desktop and republishes another report that is fed by this combined model, which is very powerful. So we want to singularly publish first the budget, and I will select the workspace data set that I just created. I'm still publishing also the visuals, so the report, but I will then cancel that. So it's done. I can go to the service. Of course, I don't see anything. You need to somehow refresh. Never understood how to do that. You typically, OK, just double click again and they just show up. You see, I have a data set and the report. I will if I click the report, I see the stupid bar chart. I will kill this. Because I didn't need this. So just publish the data set. Good. Now we will go to the other one. Got it. I still didn't open the other Power BI. OK, budget is open. It seems that the sales is not open yet. So if you have an account, you can do exactly what I'm doing. I don't, you don't need any license for this. You just need to have an account that you can publish to. So I will publish also this again to data set. That's not a data set. Ah, it's a bad idea to publish with a date. So kill this. Never do that. You don't want to change the file, the file name all the time. So I should have killed this. I forgot and I don't care doing that now. So now I have my two data sets on the cloud. I published again two things. I will kill the report. OK, so now I have the two data sets. Now I could create a report directly in the cloud on top of this data set, but that's dummy. We, we want to do that with the desktop because we want to do the trial 31 days left. What is that speaking about? Ah, it's the new license. The pro account and the premium per user. OK, that's trial 31 day. OK, I need to buy that. But of course, if you click on that, nothing happens. Uh, OK, I will check that later. So I have the data set. I could create a report here, but of course, we don't want to do that. We can connect for the refresh. We can go here to the settings, gateway connection. Data test TP cancel. Create a new data source. That sounds a bad name. Good to go. OK. Just trying to understand what's happening. So settings, gateway connection. That's also included in this data set. This is already been included. Running, select all data source to use. That is a test TP cancel. 
OK, I will create a new data source, which I call budget. I try to understand Microsoft. Sometimes it's incredibly difficult. Add this data source, Windows username, just my Windows credentials. OK, so now we'll just add this budget, apply. So now I can schedule my refresh. I will schedule by on. Add another time, we do that by 6.30, so we will refresh in 23 minutes, p.m., and apply that. So now this is fine. This data set is set for refresh, so I can forget about the problem now. If in the Excel file there is updated data, this will refresh. Now we need to do the same with sales, connect that to the same gateway, and need to add another source. This is the path, it's the same. Okay, so this was not correct. I don't need to do it. This card changes because what I will do is I need to go to the data source name, but I cannot change it. I can use the same data source, in other words. So I, I do not want to read, and I will call it budget. It's still stupid to call it budget. I should have called it sales and budget because the, 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 the source is the same. It's the same path, the same Excel file. Okay, so forgive me for, I, I think I can maybe change this, but I don't see how to do that. General alert subscription data sets. Gateway, I should go to manage gateway. Settings, manage gateways here. Clusters, budget. We want to call it differently. Sales and budget. Sales and budget, and it's terrible in capital letters. I like to do things in a nice way. So sales is budgeting fine. Now we can go. Now it's a labyrinth to go back. Go back to data set. That's uh, hell. Data set workspace. Go to settings. This is OK for the gateway maps. Refresh is scheduled. Next refresh, blah, 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 this is done. We want to do this. We want to map to sales and budget. Apply that. Schedule the refresh. 6 p.m. 6.30 p.m. Apply. So it will connect to the same data source, but for refreshing one particular table, which is the table that we are on. OK, so now it's fine. I have the source are fine. Now the models on the cloud are ready, and they will also be updated. OK, so now the point is next refresh to it now. I did it wrong, six, not eight. Now it's fine. So now I want to generate, I could of course, now I generate another Power BI desktop. Now I generate a composite model. File, new, I will save everything here before I create a problem. So learning to work is also doing copies. Before you start anything new, you want to generate a safe copy of the morning so that if you generate a disaster, you can always recover uh, to what you had in the morning or at a certain point during the day. So this is now an empty Power BI. So now I have the two data sets open just because I know I will have to play with them. And now I have a new empty. Now I want to generate a report both on sales and budget. I, I said report. I don't want to generate a new data set. Why shouldn't I be willing to do that? Waiting. Sorry for the noise.
we have two data because sets. okay go ahead sorry yeah. go ahead to, because to create a new one maybe it's uh, it reduces the efficiency of the following uh, calculation we want to do so if we do simply if the if we take the report we can use simply the result and uh, take data remotely exactly the point well you, you you said it a bit confusedly but i understand you get the point yes, we already have we already no no it's okay I, I would be more confused than you we already have the model that's the simple answer we already have it and as you said it's shared i have put it in the cloud exactly because i want to connect to it now anybody can now connect to in my domain anybody can now connect directly to that data set in the cloud is there in the cloud. I kill the report. I have the tables and the relationships. I can connect directly to an existing data set. Those that data set is connected to the data source. It will refresh so I can connect directly to that. It will manage to refresh. I said that it's not refreshed yet, but it will be refreshed at 630. So I connect here. I select the workspace. I sort by workspace here. First, I connect to sales. So this is a list of the data set on the cloud. It's not an Excel file. So you need to have an, an active internet connection. So now I'm connecting live to that remote model. And you see, I don't have the tables because I don't have the tables. They are not here. They are on powerbi.com. But I can see the model. It's already built because it's the model we built. That's the model. And the important point is that I can create a measure if I want. I can go here and create a measure and I can also create a table. And I can I cannot create a column because I cannot go on the tables. But I think I can generate even a new column somehow. I think I should be able to generate a new column. Not here, though. Let me go here. No, I cannot generate any. I will have to investigate that. OK, so I just connected to one model and I can now slice, of course, by sales. I already have the measures, so I can take. Sales. By uh, that's the matrix by let's use something we shall use, which is the OK, I need to import. I need to import the other tables. But first, let me connect. Let me just do that by sales. We didn't have the sales territory also. Info service custom sales territory is hidden. I don't know why. Can I please? I don't want it to be hidden anymore. Oh, now in the original data set, I disabled the possibility to unhide the sales territory because of the problem of info service. But now I want this to be back. So I will go now to the data set. That's an unplugged video. I hope you like it, but that will mean that I will do also, you know, things like this. So I need to go here in the original data set. I need to unhide the sales territory table. OK, now it's visible. But now if I go back here in the report, I still see it hidden. Why? Show me that you're understanding. Because uh, you have to upload the model. Exactly. Uh, the I need to publish. It's still not published, so I have to publish this. If I publish that on the cloud, then of course that report will be immediately 
updated. I go back here. I need to just refresh. Can't you modify simply the, the model on the cloud without to pass from your desktop? So directly on the yes, on the, your cloud. I don't know if you can do that directly from the cloud is still. Disabled. No, okay. let, me go, let, let me go back. I don't know. I should check it. Let me go back here. Why did I disable that? Ah, there is a problem. Now, just a second is replicating something. OK, now the sales territory now is fine. Let me try again to publish. Now it's not logged in. Sorry for this. This is an unplugged lecture. As you see, I have issues, as I told you. It should be logged in. I don't know why he's asking me password and stuff like that. He's already asking me. I already told you that. OK, data set. Replace. Published, so now I go back to the report. I refresh. And now the table is visible. OK, so now I go here and I can take the sales territory table now is visible and I can go to country or group. And everything, of course, is simply working. Now let's go to grid. Let's make something visible. OK, fine, so now I have a report on the sales. Now I want to include the budget. I want to save this. Save. OK, now first I will try to publish only this and you will see that I will not publish a new model. I will only publish a report because I don't have any tables. It says connected live to the Power BI data set. So if I publish this. I should create another. I will I will do that in Acme or my alternative workspace should call it a report, but I don't want to do it now. You got it. And you see that I this is something else I had Power BI dev and prod, but you see that I just published a report. I didn't publish a data set. Because this is just a report. Where is the data set? The data set is in the data set workspace. And this report is taking data from that data set there. If I click on it, I will just see my stupid report. And that's fed by that data set, which is being refreshed at 630. So it's not refreshed yet. We should change the numbers and see the difference. Now I'm really lazy, but I will do that. We can go to base.1 and simulate that there is an update. Please remember me to cancel this terrible thing that I'm doing. I will go to sales. It's already this one and I will add just a big sales amount like 10 million. 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. OK, I'm going to save this. Exit 30. The gateway will go to my hard drive, refresh the, the, the file, and we'll find this new row. So we should see 10 million more. I will leave it open, so No, no, I cannot leave it open. Otherwise, the bloody refresh will not work. I think it will not work. It should work anyway, but I'm not sure. So let's keep it closed so we don't have the issue. Surely it will work. 
Okay, fine. So I can do that, and you see that this report is not there is no let's say data set with it. Okay, now let's go back here, and let's say I want to include now the budget. So what I need to do is go again to Power BI dataset. But now it says, which is you know it's starting complaining. To make changes, you need to direct query connection. This is a bit technical. That's what I told you before. I don't want to spend time on this. It's creating a local model, which you can at the moment ignore. I just do that. That's okay. Will give me another warning: privacy, privacy, or privacy, whatever you want to call it. I think it says load. It's now going in direct query, which is just slightly different. But forget this. Now I want to connect now to the budget because I want to create a report that does sales versus budget. So now I'm creating a connection to another data model, an entire data model. Now the privacy thing. Now look what happens when I go here now. Boom, now I have two models. You see? I'm now connected live to both this model simultaneously. And now I can slice, I can take tables from one model and slice the other. And that's what I'm doing. Because what I want to do is doing the budget. So, for example, let's try to see how we want to organize the thing. So I'm taking sales, there is sales here, take it with the budget. Now we have, of course, potentially duplicated table. Now info service is going to be hidden. We're not going to use that. We're going to collapse it and forget about it. Product, I surely need it. Badly need it, so we'll put it here and collapse it. Customer, I don't need it because in the budget is not included, so we'll hide it. This, all these warnings, you know, in the middle of whatever calendar yeah i need it so let's keep it here collapse it anyway product we said we need it probably we can already put it here when there is the product subcategory and then the product category should be somewhere product category is here i'm mixing the two models already you see sales territory two i don't need it I will just use sales territory from this. I don't like the two and I don't want to change the names. You know, it might get angry with it. I don't know. It's a pre feature mode. It's something that's been added three months ago. So it's a, you know, something really hot new. So I can hide this so I can forget about it. It just gave it a two because now it has two tables with the same name. So it just added these two locally. The real model didn't change. But just here it had to solve this ambiguity problem, so it added locally this two thing. Year month is this weird thing. I need to decide what to do with it. And so let's just try to hide this really low so we don't worry about them. That's basically our situation now. Cool, isn't it? I don't know if you like if you consider it cool. To me, it was really cool. I could do this. <clears throat> we haven't connected yet, but it's we are dealing with two different models on the cloud. There is something else here. Oh, calendar two. I forgot about it. So we can hide this, collapse it, and forget about it. Are you still with me? Yes, we do. I didn't check the chat, so in case, please speak. Uh, OK, so now the point is that I cannot slice anything rather than things belonging to the same model. For example, if I try to use product subcategory, I'm going to have an issue. Subcategory, product subcategory, English product subcategory. Now, if I do this, what happens? Now it's becoming chilly here. Let me please give me a moment. I need to turn a heater on.
okay, now you see that I'm not slicing. I'm slicing correctly by country, the sales, but I'm not slicing correctly <clears throat> by product subcategory. Why? Simply because product subcategory doesn't slice sales. It only slices budget. Now, how can I make things work? And that's the magic of this. Let's take a look at the columns here. Just setting the temperature or I can get really sick. OK, now here I have a product subcategory key. Let me see if I have it. Product subcategory key. Now, this is one column in one model. This is the column in another model. I can connect them. Nice giving me this warning. It's a um, correct relationship, but since it's belonging to two different models, it's anyway giving me some kind of, are you sure about what you're doing or something like this? So I'm going to say just a second. Okay, I'm going to say that it's fine. Many to one cross direction field uh, single, that's okay. And now the magic has happened. Now I've connected the product subcategory table of one model to the product table of another model. This belongs to budget. You see that it's keeping on giving me this stupid information. I cannot disable this. I don't know how to disable this stupid thing from happening. And if I go here, the database is different. It's sales. They are connected. They are connected in Power BI Desktop, of course. So Power BI Desktop is taking two models and is connecting them on the fly for me. So now, if I go back to my report, now I see, boom, the product correctly. And the important thing is that now I should also be able to include budget. I should already have a stupid measure here. Here, now it's not formatted and I'm not sure I can format it now. Can I do that? Yes, I can. You know, it's a report. You never know what that lets you do. Maybe you should do that at the data set level. So that's zero. Fine, so we did the thing. I'm happy to, to see this. It's the now it's the first time I show this to students because it's something like three months old. So I'm going to format also this. Do you have any comment? Is this cool? Tell me your feedback. Now, um, you can give the feedback when you want. Now, uh, I need to do a measure that does sales versus budget. And now the problem is, where should I do the measure? I could do the measure at the report level so that only those that consume this report will be able to see that measure. This is an advantage if I need that, but it's a disadvantage because if I start to disseminate measures around reports, I'm going to duplicate things. And then things might work sometimes and not in another report or somebody might have different code. That's not a nice thing. So you just do that. If the CEO wants something and you cannot say no to the CEO and you just want to give something that only he can see, so you don't want to put that in any shared data set. So either you don't share the data set that you play with him, which is anyway the same as writing docs directly for him, or the best is just to create, a. it's called a report level measure. So I could generate a measure here, new measure, and now I could even generate a new table or a new column in an, in an existing 
uh, table. All, all local to this report. So I'm not generating a new table or column in the data set in the cloud. I'm just creating them here and I could connect them. I could add another Excel file that I have on my desktop where I just did my back of the envelope calculation for my R&D project and I want to enjoy all this data. And so I can just take another table here and play with it. OK, now you didn't give me any feedback. Are we OK? You like this? Can I go ahead? Do you have questions? Please give me a feedback. Just uh, I need to understand if we are fine. Yeah, for now I, I don't have question. It's tough, but uh, yeah, you can go ahead, please. Okay. Now uh, the point is that still I have the problem. Let's see the connections. So from the product chain, we are fine. Category filters, sub category filters, subcategory, subcategory filters, product, product filters, sales. So fine. Subcategory filters directly budget. So product should be hidden. Because if we use product in the reports, we can just create problems because we only filter sales, but we don't filter budget. And we don't want to forget about it anyway, because the data flows here. So we want to remember it exists and we need to keep it. So I leave it here visible. I can collapse this and they can be visible. They are fine. So this chain is fine. Geography. I think I need I think I need to hide it. What is it connected to? It's connected to customers so I can hide it and forget about it. And it's also connected to something else. What is it connected to? No, only to customer. OK, so I can just put it here and forget about this guy here too. Fine, so this side is OK. <clears throat> now this side, sales territory is not connected to budget. We have the sales territory region. Uh, we can use it here. Region, hoping that it's unique. It's OK, it's one too many. It just gives the warning because we're doing that on a composite model. Usually it doesn't give this warning. It does that because it's a composite model, so it's I'm connecting again tables from two different models, OK? Sales territory is in sales, but in the sales data set, budget is in the budget data set. So uh, you see these weird connectors just because I'm doing a sophisticated thing, let's say. So this side is also fine. Now we have the, the issue of the calendar. If we use calendar, of course, it doesn't work. So just let's hide this, please. Thank you. Now we kill this stuff and we just take the calendar. <clears throat> now we sales. Ah, calendar two. Okay, calendar two is here. Okay, perfect. Was just wondering. But... OK, so <clears throat> if I take calendar and slice by year, I still have the problem that I don't slice budget. So I need to cl close this problem. Why this? Well, because calendar is connected to sales, so it's fine. It's collected to customer, we don't care, or info service, we don't care. But it's not connected to anything related to budget. Now. We we were connected to a calendar, but in the other model. And at the end, we imported first the, fir the other model. So now this is called calendar two. So I decided not to use that. So this relationship is useless. We leave it there because I don't think we can cancel it. And then I don't want to create problems because it's a preview feature. So it's still not even released by Microsoft in fully supported. It's an R&D thing, let's say. So I will simply connect also this to this, hoping that there is no ambiguity. In that case, we will disable that relationship. So I need to see anyway year month. 
Where the hell is year month? Oh, I don't have it in this one. Shit. Okay, I have to create it, and therefore I will create a local column. That's okay. I will create a local column. Uh, new column is not here. New column. It's incredible that I can create a column. Believe me, it's really incredible. Calendar. No, let's call it only year month. Calendar year. Calendar year. And format. It's already giving me an issue because this is a, it's a why is it giving me the problem of format? Okay, maybe format doesn't work, which is an issue. As I told you, it's an unplugged thing. Let's see. Calendar year and format. We said month something. Number of year by this. Why isn't it working? should be working. Is it working or not? I have this column. I cannot see this column though, because I'm creating that on a table that I don't have, which is incredible. So I cannot see it. This is one of the bad thing of doing these kind of models, at, at least for now. I cannot see the table, the, the column, the table and the for the column. But I have that column, so now I can see that. And it's year month, you see? No, you cannot see. You cannot imagine what Zoom I'm doing. This column was created by me right now. You can now understand what is the Zoom that I'm doing. OK. I will connect this to year month here on top. It is still telling me, yeah, thank you. OK, fine. So now I should hide calendar. Because I cannot use calendar. If I use calendar, then I only filter sales, so I will hide it. But I will keep it here because we need it still. And then Sorry, can... how how can you uh, create that column if the, it uh, doesn't work? If uh, it, it uh, yeah, doesn't uh, work? Oh, it's not just that IntelliSense has a little bug, <clears throat> but in reality there is no error. Okay. So, uh, it was just showing me, but when I executed the code, the engine said, okay, so, you know, IntelliSense is a stupid, you know, it's like a PR for discotheques. So oh. one, of those, one of those guys that is just, you know, yeah, you can smile with it and so forth, but it doesn't really have any power. So the engine is just saying the formula works, so just fine. Now, I'm not saying that anybody that does that is stupid. I'm just saying that many that I knew at the time were stupid. Okay, in any case, uh, <laughs> I got it. Okay. So, uh, and again, it's incredible that you can create a column, believe me, because it's really complex to do it since we don't even have the table here, as you see. So now, uh, we still doesn't work. Well, maybe at the end we have a bad surprise because I see that it's not up, but what I'm showing here now, uh, it's not working. Now it's up to you to tell me why. No, you cannot do that because you don't have the Power BI. So the point is that where am I taking this calendar thing from? Ah, oh, but this is in, it's hidden now because I've been hiding calendar. So it's from the calendar table though, but let me unhide it. So I can see that. So now you see that it's from calendar. Calendar year is coming from calendar. Now I need to remove it. And I need to take calendar year, the year month from year month. And finally, I have it. Now I can also slice by time. So now the model works. I can slice now by any dimension. Still not nice. We need to fix some things, but now the model is complete. You have a pretty sophisticated model, even though it's pretty simple. And now, of course, I can publish that. And when I publish it, you will see that I publish a data set. Which one? One of the two, the one that is local. I don't remember which one. You will see that if we publish a data set. But you will see that if I try to get there and see, oh, but what the hell is this? Should I refresh it? It will tell, you, it will tell me, no, 
you don't need to refresh it. It's just a local copy of a live connection to the data set. It's an architectural thing, okay? So, but the logic remains the same. The data set is, don't worry about it. You're not really publishing anything. It's just a local copy that doesn't occupy it. So don't worry about it. I'm sorry that I have to say that, but you might be confused because you will see that there is indeed a data set that I will, sorry, I'm just fighting with this ether. Okay. Now uh, let's publish that and uh, just play with it a little bit. You have questions? We could use this alter. Now I should create one that is called really report, you know? So maybe those were intermediate report, but now I will go and generate a workspace called report. And now we'll publish on the workspace report this composite model, which is already, let's say, so I'm now I'm connected to the cloud on my Power BI desktop. What I need to do is transfer this to the cloud. So everything is now in the cloud, but still being fed by the cloud. So I'm fed by the cloud in Power BI desktop very well. Just publish it there and keep being fed by the cloud. So of course, I don't need to schedule any refresh for this. Okay, I refresh the data set. You don't refresh the reports. The reports are always refreshed because they're connected live. So when you open the report in the service, when somebody consumes that, he consumes that in the service, it's refreshed in the refreshed, which is just go and read the data because it's just reading the data continuously from the cloud. So it's super fast. Goes 100 megabits per second on the Microsoft cloud. So it's quick. if you have a terrible connection, that's another point. But the model itself is going to be quick to get to the data. The data is in the cloud, so it's, it's in there. It's in his same home. You see that I published a data set in this case, which is weird. The first time I saw that, I said, wow. But then I remembered that he said, oh, you need to create a local model, whatever that meant. I wasn't sure I understood at that time. But then I said, OK, so I should refresh this. But that's ridiculous. Why should I refresh something that is connected to this is a data set I'm connected to. This is, looks like a copy. And in fact, if you go to settings and you go to gateway connection, it says you don't need a gateway for this data set because all its data sources are in the cloud, but you can use a gateway for enhanced control over how you connect. That's not something we're doing. So I could use the data, the, the gateway to decide some policy. You know, these are IT things. I don't want to go into that. But you don't need to do that because in reality, that data set is just a copy that is just connected to the local, to the copy that is already in the cloud. So forget about this. Anyway, I need to leave it here. I don't think I can hide it. So maybe this should be, let's say, internal reports and then reports, but I don't want to make it too difficult. So I can click here. Oh, and of course, we should have got a refresh at 6.30. I forgot to check. Uh, let me see if the data set, if the refresh worked, because it, I still see the wrong number. Let me check. Uh, workspace. Reports, no, workspace data set. And of course, workspace data set, um, workspace data set settings. We want to call it data sets. Okay, now let's see the refresh. I don't see that from here. Where should I see that settings? No. I should go here by settings. Last refresh succeeded at 634. But then didn't I add 10 million? What the hell is that? It should be connected to buzz.a1, right? Data source credentials, parameters, gateway connection, 
Buzzy Dati 1, Search and Budget, why on earth didn't it work? It didn't refresh. Now, even here, if I refresh, I should see an error occurred while loading the model. The connection is correct by permission to access the data source. So there is something in the connection. What is the connection? This is a report, so... Change source, clear permissions. So it should work. It, it doesn't refresh. I don't, I don't understand what is the problem. Uh, maybe it's because I'm interacting with the model. Let me just try this. Let me just go here on the report. So this is working. Fresh. That it could another record where the federal connection is correct and they have permission to access the data source. I mean, this is ridiculous because I am the owner of the data. So I don't know, there is something that is not working. Let me just, just try to publish this again. Let's publish again the budget. keeping many things open, maybe too much, too many. Now, let's try again to publish sales, the data set. I don't know what's happening, so I'm trying to publish again. So data set has been republished, the sales. Now we republish the budget working it doesn't have my credentials i don't know why i lost it <clears throat> sorry for the issue got it now let me see if now it works Okay, so what we will do is this. Let me show you how I, I'm going to fix this. Delete. Change source. I will reselect budget. And I will recreate sales. That's how you tend to fool these systems. Let's see if I really fool this. It lost something, I don't know what. Okay, now since it reloaded, it probably lost the relationships because I'm seeing now that the year month thing is not working. And probably I also lost the column on calendar. That's an, uh, a nuance. And I have to hide calendar two. And I have to hide info service, geography, 
customer product sales territory to and cal no calendar no because I want to create a stupid column. I cannot make it by seven. Are you okay to stay a few minutes more? For me, yeah, sure. it's not a problem. Calendar year. I guess any also over uh, seven. Me. Okay. I will try to not month name, but English month number. Connect. Save. I want to refresh now. OK, refresh is fine. You know, sometimes these things happen. I don't know what happened, but it's normal life. So that's fine because we need to complete now the point of the many to many thing. Uh, I don't think there is anything more we should do. Yeah, of course, we should do the I was saying we should do the measure now of the delta between sales and budget. Now, where should we do the measure? On this model or in the other or on this report, if the CEO is there, but then I mean, the delta is not surely something you want to hide. So uh, maybe you need to hide entirely the sales and the budget in that case. OK, but otherwise I will just create it on the data set so that I can have it in any report that is fed by the data set. So I don't want to create a measure here. I will generate the measure. Where should I generate that? Well, in that case, now that I think about it, I will generate it here because this is the only place where I can generate that measure. Because if I go to the sales data set, I don't have the budget. If I go to the budget data set, I don't have the sales. So I will generate a report level measure now. So I will go to modeling, create a measure that exists only in this report. That's called sales versus budget. Is uh, and the so two this, measures. Uh, cross, uh, this cross measure is uh, buildable only in this report with the exactly. two model merge, right? Exactly. And takes one measure, calculates that on the table on one model, and calculates oh. the sales on one table on the other model, and then does the calculation in this local model and gives me the result. Okay. Sorry so for the guys, I interrupted. No problem. Uh, this is uh, sales versus budget PCT. Boom. And you can do this. Now again, local level uh, level measures is not exactly nice, so try to limit them the, the minimum you can because it, to maintain them is expensive. Um, again, because you need to. You know, go in each report, you have local measures. So if you have 10 reports that don't work, you have 10 measures to fix and not just one at the data set level that works. Now, suppose that I want to generate a new measure on the sales data on the sales side. I will generate the data set so that I can immediately see it here. Let me do that and then we fix the thing. So sales, let me just say I will finish later. Finisco più tardi verso le sette e mezzo, ok? Ok, so um, we can generate we can generate a measure here, like for example quantity, or maybe we already have it. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff here. So we want to do sales now. We just just a stupid thing just to show that we have it. A new measure is not here. Why cannot I create a measure there? Nobody knows. New measure. We we'll call it just sales uh, 31 March equals one. Just a measure that I created now in the data set, in my Power BI desktop, so in my, let's say, project data set file where I'm in my operating room. Now I publish this. And it will automatically appear in the report. Replace, please. Mm 
but every time I do a measure, I have to shoot it uh, to the, I have to launch it to the, um, to the cloud. No, you can just write 10 or 15 on them and launch it in a mock when you want. Oh, okay. But if okay. you want to see, if you want to see it appear on the report, of course you need to shoot it to the cloud. Otherwise you don't have it here. So sooner or later you need to do it so that you have now March. I don't see it. And here it is. So now you can use this measure in this report. You just created that and now it's available. Imagine that these are your users. They will do that from the cloud. So this is, of course, also available in the cloud once now I publish it. So now every time, it. so every time I, you, I have to put a measure inside the report I'm doing, I'm working now, I have every time to put, to put it in the, in the cloud. Absolutely, but it's consider people very slow. Yes, because you have a single report, but when you have 10 reports, you understand what that means? That with just one pub publish, then it's available in 10 reports. So if you do that in a single report, I agree with you. It's a lot of work. But if you, okay. if you have, you never do that with a single report. When I go to corporations, there are like 50 reports. And you know what that means? I have a single data set. Yeah, we'll have to publish but I will publish and those measures are available in all the reports and the DAX is the same in all the reports centralized in my Power BI desktop. You're right. That's the point. So as soon as you have a single report, publish the report. You don't want to centralize. But when you go to a corporation, you need to start with the right foot. If you start publishing data set, people will keep on doing that. They will do it. Believe me, we are in Italy. We are a conservative country. They will tell you, you did that, so we're going to do that forever. We always did that. They will then tell you, they always did that. And that's a reason to keep in doing right, stupid things. So even I try immediately to suggest this architecture because I know the reports will come. People will say, oh, it's nice. Power BI is really nice. I can touch and it's interactive. So they will ask for reports. You need, if you do multiple data sets, well, then you need to connect them to the gateway all of them and you need to refresh for each of them you need to schedule a refresh for each separate data set because it's a different data set for the software so you know all right okay it. so uh, so that's the measure as i was saying now we have the delta of course we could do we could say year month really sucks i want a year and so forth but the real problem is that now the user is forced to use year month but the user doesn't want to use year month. The user will tell you, oh, will you just give me please one second, just one second. Okay, so the user doesn't want to use that 
weird thing, this year month. The user knows the calendar table, and now I should hide it. But in reality, I want to use it. What is the problem? The problem is that if I apply a filter on the calendar, it goes to sales. That's no problem. This is OK. The problem is that it doesn't go here. If it did, that would be OK, because then I filter budget. So the only problem I need to solve is this. I can make this relationship bidirectional. If I make this relationship bidirectional, then a filter applied to calendar will propagate to year month, and then I'm um, one to many will filter budget. And in this way, I can still use the calendar table, which is more friendly for the user. And I will hide this table. I cannot kill it, but I will hide it. Um, should I wait a second for you to digest this? We're going to use bidirectional filter, which is an ex extremely, let's say, advanced feature. We will go many to one now. So the the calendar and your month where we use the um, bidirectional uh, uh, link, we are creating a bridge between the two model, right? Uh, non, uh, well, we are just making it possible to filter rows in the opposite direction, in the sense that what happens now is that when I filter calendar, for example, for a certain month, well, each value that corresponds to that month in the year month table will be selected. Of course, uh, in this case, there is no problem because each year month corresponds to a single year month. Let's try to think if I go now at the day level. Well, then we have an issue. Because if I select a single day in calendar, what do I select in, in year month? An entire month. So every time I filter a single date in calendar, I will take the budget of the full month. So that's why usually we don't use these kind of filters. But if I stay at the level of year month or higher, things will go well. Please digest this. So what I will do is I will hide all the columns in calendar that go below the granularity of the month, because that's my limit. Budget is at the month level. In case I can create a calculation to do the budget by day, dividing by the number of days, and then it will be working days, because then will kill me with this. Oh, if the working day, and then we need to do the work. So I can invent something, of course. But the real data is that budget is there at the month level. And I want to use the calendar table. I know the customer will complain like a nagging wife for me or husband for a, for a woman. Uh, it will complain, no, my, we, are used, we have always been doing this and so forth. And so we want to use them. It's also nice to use the calendar table. I can accept that. So we want to make this bidirectional. I will double click this and make this cross direction both. So now this filter is bidirectional. And now let me ask you a very important question. Well, let's see that it works first. <clears throat> so now I should be able to use the calendar table. So now I can hide a uh, year month. I can still use the calendar table. Uh, let's kill the stupid measures. So this one, we don't need it. We can use the calendar year, for example. And you see that now it works. And I'm using the calendar. Now, year month comes from the wrong table. So if I go down, it doesn't work. Oh, yeah, it still works, sorry, but it comes from the wrong table, so I cannot use it because it comes from a hidden table, which is earmark. So now it works. 
Uh, I can still go by quarter. Do I have a quarter here? Fiscal quarter. Well, calendar year and fiscal quarter is not exactly nice, but maybe it's only fiscal quarter. This calendar quarter. Yes, so never mix the two. Calendar quarter. Boom. Now, sorry for the formatting, but I don't want to spend time there. You see the percentages always the same. So this is working and now I can use the calendar. But of course, if I exaggerate and I go by date, well, then I have an issue for sure. Quarters is still fine, but if I go by date, budget is not, it's taking the full, you know, so it cannot be correct. That's the point. We don't have that. So I should hide uh, those columns. So I can go here, for example, the date column. I will hide it. So you cannot slice by that. And I will also hide it in sales. So you cannot also slice by that. What is that order date? If I have a week in calendar, I don't think, but if I have it, I will have to hide it. Week, number of year, hide it. Day number, French day number, English day number, day number of something, I will all hide this. Day number of month, no. Day number of week, no. Day number of year, I should think about it. But I would, I would anyway say no. No, surely no. Date key, no. And so I only leave things that you can play with and not creating disasters. Okay, questions? Now the most important question of all the lecture. I know you're tired, I will let you breathe one minute. Because of course we need to fix the, the point on, could we done differently and accepting Power BI suggestion at the beginning to create that bloody many to many relationships, relationship. Okay, now what do we want? Yes, is there a question? Yes, I remember that you said that the many to many rela relation uh, create a problem for the engine because it uh, find out uh, ambiguity in many to many uh, connection. You said that uh, in the first or second uh, lecture. I think you mean bidirectional filters, not many to many connection. Many to many okay. is where, where you don't have a primary key on either side. Okay. The okay. Ambigu ambiguity is given by the fact that you have bidirectional filters. That's correct. Now, in this particular case, ambiguity is not a problem, but of course, we should speak about when it is a problem. Anyway, it is a problem when you can create multiple paths between two tables. You need to have a single path between two tables, a single relationship active. But when you start bidirectional filters, for example, Consider uh, calendar and sales. Calendar is filtering sales, but calendar is also filtering year month. Now, if year month was connected to sales, well, then we will have ambiguity because calendar could go directly to sales or go to sales through year month. That's an example. Did I mm -hmm. make the point? In this case, this doesn't happen because year month goes to budget. It's not related to sales and the software didn't give me any warning, in fact. So a single one can be OK, but you need there are a lot of things you need to take care of when you do that. And, you know, it takes some time and experience to understand this, but it's something that it's OK. You will learn it uh, through time. Anyway, you will do that the least possible times in your life. So it will okay. happen to you not very, not very often. If it happens very often, you should start study again. Because you can use cross filter in calculate. 
which is making a bidirectional relationship on the fly. So an existing relationship, you can turn it into bidirectional, applying a modifier and calculate on the fly. So that's what I typically do normally. Uh, in this case, it's so OK to do this. It's really not dangerous that I would simply do that and forget about it. So you don't have to worry on the measures and write calculate everywhere, which makes the code very heavy, you know, very verbose. So you just leave with the standard measures. OK, I got it. Now, some other times you have calendars that are different in the two models. In that case, I would generate. Professor? Professor, we do not hear you. Can you hear me, please? Maybe not. Uh, yes. yes. No. Ah, yeah, you can hear me. OK, sorry, I had a problem with this heater, so. OK, so uh, we were saying uh, the important question is. <clears throat> what about the filter when I apply that in calendar? It goes from calendar to year month and then from year month to budget. Fine. And then, of course, from sales. But I want to focus on the relationship between calendar and budget. Is it bidirectional or monodirectional? Consider the entire path. Sorry if I interrupt you. Can you share the screens, please? Of, of course. Sorry. <laughs> Don't I worry. Forgot that. I forgot. OK, so here. Just let me, I want to kill the camera. OK, it's already killed, so we don't go on bandwidth. This filter, this connection, the connection between calendar and budget as, an, as a single connection. 
Is it bidirectional or monodirectional? It's mono. Correct. If I apply a filter here, it doesn't flow here. Therefore, consider globally, it's a monodirectional filter. This is important because when we create the thing automatically now, Power BI, of course, because it's Microsoft, will offer us the wrong selection, which is making it fully bidirectional. So Microsoft will offer us the chance to create a relationship like this automatically it will do it will create let's say some it's not exactly this but we can imagine that it acts like this it will create this automatically and will establish both these relationships both as bi-directional that's not what we want to do because then yes this is becoming dangerous having fully a bi-directional path is not needed this is just internal that's why i told you that here it's really it's okay nothing can happen but already I would say no, I wouldn't do this. So we shall keep this monodirectional when we create the many to many cardinality. So we shall have many. No, sorry. We shall have many in the calendar. Many in budget. So many to many, but the direction will be only this one. And you will know now that what this is equivalent to it's a first bidirectional, uh, let's say, connection to the bridge and then a monodirectional connection to the fax. So you're safe and you don't have a filter from budget that goes back to calendar, which is weird. Now, this is what you can imagine that happens if we connect directly. So we go to the beginning of the problem, say calendar to budget. Now, I never did that on a composite model because now the two tables belong to two different models in the cloud. That's the first time that I do that, but I'm not scared. I think it will simply work. There is no reason to believe that it shouldn't. But the point is that if I try to create this relationship, now it will really get angry. I need to disable these ones. OK, we were speaking about ambiguity before. I cannot now also say, OK, I want to connect now directly calendar to budget. It will tell me, yes, you need to disable some other things. Let's try to do that. Your month, you might hear uh, a little of Bruce Springsteen on the background. Budget your month. Table your month filter, which is from the same Power BI data source of analysis services through a path that exists outside of the data source. Okay, it's already telling me that I cannot do that. And now that I remember, I need to disable this. Can I do that? <laughs> That's a live a live session that maybe I forgot that now I cannot disable this. Oh, of course, I can disable that. I created that locally. Sorry, I'm just becoming a little confused. So I right click here, properties. I disable this, make this relationship active. No, not anymore. So now my report breaks. Okay, but that's okay. Now I will connect again year month with year month. Let's see if it again complains. <clears throat> it doesn't filter that. Ah, but it still tells me that there is this. So that's an issue because now I cannot cancel that. Delete. I can do that. Yes, it lets me delete, fortunately. OK, you never know what is the behavior of these features, you know. That's OK, so we'll simply delete it. So again, my report is broken. Now it shouldn't tell me that I'm filtering that bloody thing. So where is the year month? Year month, third time. OK. Now it's saying, telling me, okay, it's many to many, fine. We know what's happening now. It's not exactly like that, but you can imagine that it's something like that. But we don't want to do this. We want to do single. And now the point is, you understand which one should I choose?
calendar filters budget. Exactly. That's creating exactly our scenario. Click OK. And now we have a many to many. Look at the icons. Many to many cardinality connection. Between calendar and budget, we are I've disconnected the other table. So the year month cannot be working. And in fact, now. It is working again because now I created a connection, but it is this connection that is working now, not certainly this one. There is no connection between calendar in the month and I'm using calendar here and now it works again. So now I don't need I don't see any more any weird table. Of course, in reality, I will hide all the columns. I will leave only the measures, not any single column will be visible. The user will only see measures. And the only column it will see are columns from the dimensions, not from the fact table. And uh, the keys will all be hidden. And all the technical measures and all the technical columns will be hidden. So the customer needs to see. Really simple, simple, simple stuff. So of course now. I have done this report, I can publish it. Replace. And now in the cloud. I need to refresh this somehow. Now I have my report in the cloud. Still the refresh worked, but I still don't see the numbers that I wanted to see. Shouldn't I see higher numbers now? I still don't see the additional 10 millions, which is something that I can't explain. Dati per DAX, base dati 1. Uh, I put the 10 millions, but I don't see that. Sales amount, okay. And where the hell? Now, this is a bit weird. Ah, sales is a bloody sum X. Let me tell you this. Oh, shit. Okay, now let's make it simple. I wanted to show you that it worked. Okay, so now we have it. So the refresh did work. And I don't need to publish now. Ah, uh, yeah, I need to publish because I need to change the measure. But in reality, the data is there. I mean, let me show you that if I create a local measure here, oh, well, it's becoming complex. Anyway, uh, uh, now I can simply go here, publish.
So the refresh indeed worked, but I forgot that I had selected a measure that used different columns. So of course it was just showing me the correct thing. Okay, and now if I go in my report and I refresh, I will see 39 now, and if I go to the cloud and I refresh, just a hit, just for making refresh the visual, I will see 39 million, okay? So I hope that was useful. We've been basically seeing a little project, very simple, but outlined from the beginning to the end. We just had to share, but it's just sharing the workspace. Right click on the workspace, share, put in the email of the guys that have the right to see that workspace and decide if they are readers, writers, or contributors. I don't remember. You can see all those details um, just in many different sources. Okay. So I hope it was useful. Thank you, Professor. Yes, thank you. You're welcome and see you for the for the final Professor, test. Professor, may I ask you something? Just a second. A technical, a technical question, question about the exam. Can I? Can I? A technical question about the exam. Of course you can. And yeah. it's just because, it's because I'm not, not uh, able to enroll to the exam because the office doesn't uh, still as an in my career the exam business intelligence and uh, I don't know if I can I don't know do the exam anyway but I am not able to enroll uh, you're not able to enroll in, in, in what sense sorry what, what is the issue for enrolling? I, I made like the business uh, intelligence in my personal study plan and the office still hasn't uploaded yet the exam. Ah, okay, the yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, and you cannot even join the list, you mean? Yeah, 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 that's the point. Okay, now send me please an email with your uh, ID number, name and surname. That's enough for me. Don't forget the initial zeros and everything on the ID. Okay. And just show up. You will do, you will do the test. Okay. And when, you are, and when you are okay with the bureaucracy, whatever that is, uh, I will register the vote. Okay, thank you very much. That's, uh, that I would say that we can surely proceed like this. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Welcome. Anything else? Okay, so we see for the test, don't forget to, to apply and then we shall, in case you need me for suggestions or stuff like that, you can always use the Unibo email. So it was nice to do this course. That's the first year, of course, we could have done better, but I think we went through a lot of stuff and you got some good information about how to deal, uh, how to deal with data in some way. Okay. Yes, Professor. Thank you for this uh, extra lecture. Thank you. No problem. It was nice. Thank you for your uh, availability, yeah. teacher. You're welcome. See you. Thank you. All the best. See you. See you at the See exam. you, Professor. Bye. Bye.